Good evening all, and welcome. Happy Friendsgiving to all my American friends. I hope you have, or have had, a fantastic day, and feel incredibly full and satisfied. And I've had a great time with family, of course. By the time you hear this, I will in fact be attending a Friendsgiving feast, which I am very much looking forward to. So, there's that. A huge thank you to my amazing patrons, as always. If you'd like to receive some or all the things that you see on screen, feel free to check out my Patreon to receive some awesome rewards, and of course to help me out. But for now, it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. My apartment is haunted. I'm 20 years old and live in a fairly small apartment complex. I live here with my husband and two-year-old daughter. We've lived here for about a year and a half, and the weird stuff started about eight months ago. In my apartment, there are two bedrooms, and in my daughter's room, there is a utility closet and a regular sliding door closet. In my room, one whole wall is basically a closet with three sliding doors. You may be wondering why I'm explaining closets. Well, this is because that's where all the creepiness started. One huge OCD tick of mine is closing doors. I cannot stand doors being open for no reason. So every door in my home is shut almost 24-7. Or so I thought. One day while I was visiting my cousin, who lives one apartment building over from me, for an all-day occasion, my daughter was gone with family for the weekend, and my husband was at work. Some odd stuff happened. My husband made it home first, and only went in for about five minutes to grab something out the kitchen, and bring it over to my cousin's place. He verified that I indeed had closed every door while he got home. After sitting around and chatting with my cousin for a few more hours, we went home. Walking through my front door, I felt like something was off. It was pitch black, but I chalked it up to my husband shutting off the stove light, which in itself is still odd. Stumbling for the light switch, we find one of my daughter's toys placed in front of the light switch, where in the dark, you could easily trip over it. This was sign too that something was off. I knew for a fact that it hadn't been there where I'd left earlier. I brushed it off and continued on getting settled in for the night. Later, while walking down the hall, I stopped dead in my tracks. One third of the way down the hall, when I saw my daughter's bedroom door slightly ajar. Had my husband been in there? I could have sworn he was in the living room the entire time. But then I heard it. The closet door. Her closet door, in the pitch black of her room, had slammed open. I stood frozen for a moment before slowly peeking around the corner of her door frame. Nothing. The door was closed, but something else catches my attention. Out of the corner of my eye, I see it. A small light. A flashlight that had previously been in the bottom drawer of the kitchen. It sat in the center of my daughter's bed, with the light illuminating the corner behind her bed. I approached it slowly, and the moment my hand connected with the light, a button-operated toy began flashing behind me. You heard that right. This toy that you have to manually press buttons onto to turn on was flashing while I was cornered in my daughter's room. I felt my heart was just about to force its way up my throat. I couldn't breathe until, like a hero out of a movie, my husband walked in asking what I was doing and I left the room quickly. A few nights later, my daughter is still out with family and me and my husband are in bed. It's the middle of the night, and I'm having the weirdest dream. I dream that I'm lying awake in bed, and there is a dark shape in the darkest corner of my room. 
and it startles me awake. Or so I think. I wake up in another dream with this tall, dark figure bent over my bed staring down at me. This time I'm jolted awake, and I'm trying to catch my breath. While I sit in the silent dark, my husband is sleeping, and I'm essentially alone. That's when I hear it. My closet door is shaking back and forth on the track, not like being blown by wind, but like someone is shoving it trying to get out. At this point I'm in tears and shaking my husband awake, and the moment his eyes open it stops. I get frustrated and cry harder, because now I feel like I'm going crazy, but this entity obviously isn't done yet. Night after night of listening to toys coming on alone, and closets opening and closing, does it finally happen? I have this problem with my eyes called optic neuritis, which causes me to occasionally lose my eyesight when I stress out too much. The reason I tell you this is because the night my husband finally got to see what I was talking about, was the night I lost my vision for a few days. We were in bed sometime at night, and it's quiet. I'm really good at detecting sound, since I'm basically blind every few months or so, when I hear a familiar click. I sat straight up in bed. Our hallway light is a twist light, so to turn it on you twist a little knob at the bottom, and it clicks when you twist it. At the same time, my husband jumps out of bed, because he sees the hall light flash on through the crack of the door. I'm panicking, but I know that he is finally going to understand what I've been suffering through. He opens the door, and from what he told me, every door in the house was wide open. After a long night of closing doors and tear-filled apologies, we finally pass out from exhaustion. My daughter comes home and is acting strange, talking to walls, sitting in her closet, and pointing at corners. This scares me, but my husband says it's normal kid stuff. And before bed, my daughter and I are in the living room, and she's using her potty chair when she points into the kitchen and says, push it off. And within seconds, a glass is flung from the counter at the wall, and lands upright on the floor. I'm traumatized living in my apartment. One thing more happened yesterday, when me and a friend were sitting in the living room with my daughter, and she gets up and runs to the open door. I assume my husband is home, because before she gets there the doorknob starts turning, like he's trying to unlock it. And the moment she unlocks it, the door starts to open but slams before she can pull it open. I'm confused at this point, and so is my friend, so I check the door and nobody is even near it. I live at the top of some stairs, so I'd hear someone running down the stairs if it was a joke. My daughter is visiting for holidays with family, and I'm alone. While I'm video chatting with my mother, she stops mid-sentence and says hi to my husband. I'm confused, and think that she can see the confusion on my face because she begins to look confused as well. I remind my mother that I'm alone, and she goes pale, explaining that she had just seen the shape of a person standing in the hall behind the couch where I was sitting. Moments later, after I walk through the house with an old pocket knife in hand, I find nothing. But now my mum and I, at the same time, ask, is that running water? I look around trying to find the source of the sound, checking every bathroom, not a drip. Then the sound sounds like it's coming from the kitchen, nothing again. Frustrated, I stomp back to the bathroom, and my skin begins to crawl. The sink is on full blast. How? Confused yet again, I walk back into the living room, phone still in hand, talking to my mother and the wall behind me that connects the living room and my daughter's room. There's a loud bang. Like someone hit the apartment wall very hard. I spent an hour waiting outside my apartment on the phone with my mum, waiting for my husband to get home, and survey it further before I entered.
At one time, my parents owned the house my brother and sister-in-law now live in as a beach house. When I stayed there alone, the weirdest things would happen. Like odd noises coming from the kitchen in the middle of the night. If I was there with certain friends of mine, it would be a different story. There are two incidences that stick out in recent memory. The first one took place when we were sleeping on the futon in the living room, which we did because the only beds we were allowed to sleep on were extremely uncomfortable. So we just used them to hold our clothes and toiletries. I have extremely bad eyesight. So while watching TV that night, I was wearing my glasses. Then when I decided to go to sleep, I took them off and set them on the arm of the futon folded up so they would be handy in the morning. Well, that turned out not to be the case. I reached over to grab them and they were gone. I wanted to be sure I wasn't jumping to any conclusions, so I started looking in all the places they could logically be, between the futon arm and mattress, under the futon and under the bookcase, in the bathroom, etc. But I couldn't find them. Annoyed but wanting to proceed with the day, I put on my contact lenses, and Tracy walks into the bedroom where we all had our stuff, and comes back saying, You've got to see this. After I followed her in there, she lifts up one of her shirts, and lo and behold, there are my glasses underneath it, open and upside down, as though someone had been wearing them. Now keep in mind, Tracy does also wear glasses, but her prescription is widely different from mine. This means she would have noticed immediately if she had picked up mine by mistake. And even then, why would she have put them under her shirt? Neither of us ever had any history of sleepwalking, so I doubt it was something like that. Unless she confessed it herself, I refuse to entertain the notion this could have been a prank. The second incident is even more inexplicable. This time I was staying with Tracy and a guy I was dating at the time who we called Big John, since he was literally about seven feet tall. Tracy slept on one of the two tiny rock hard beds in the spare room, and John and I slept on the futon. Next morning, John and I were both awake, but not really moving or speaking yet. I felt him turn to look at the bookcase. That was about three feet from the futon but he didn't move in a manner that would have allowed him to touch anything on it. After he looked away, a picture of my brother and dad fell off its shelf, where it was a couple of inches back from the edge, and fell to the floor when shattered. After my parents sold the house to my brother, his stepson would complain about things like his dresser drawers opening and shutting by themselves at night. My sister-in-law, is not the type of person to allow something like that to scare her children. So she firmly told the entity that it was perfectly welcome to stay, but messing with the kids was not going to be tolerated. After that, things calmed down until they expanded the house. So my sister-in-law had to reiterate her original terms. When I was a teenager, my family moved into a new house in Ohio. As soon as we moved in, my mother started saying that she felt the house was haunted and she could sense a presence there. She said she heard someone call her name and that she felt someone put a hand on her shoulder. There was one time she woke up with someone holding her feet down and she couldn't shake whatever it was and started screaming. She also heard muffled voices. We didn't believe her at all until both my sister and I started experiencing strange things. My first experience was when I was reading a book in my bedroom at 3 a.m. I am a night owl and it wasn't that unusual. Everyone should have been asleep, but suddenly I heard very faint footsteps right outside my bedroom door. They were too heavy to be my mum's or sister's, so I assumed my dad was walking around checking up on us. I sprinted to the door, and when I opened it, I was shocked to discover the hallway was dark, and no one was up there. Our attic 
had several feet of fluffy insulation covering the entire area. There was nothing stored there, and at times you could hear steps coming from the attic, running up to the side of the house with the driveway, when someone was pulling up to the house, as if they wanted to see who had arrived. It was almost cool in the daytime, but terrifying at night. There was always something clicking loudly under my bed, as well as in the closet at night. I always tried to convince myself it was air vents. However, all the air vents were on the other side of the bedroom, and never made clicking noises. I sometimes saw an outline of a person, standing next to my bed, if my head was covered with a sheet, and when I'd pull it off, there'd be no one there. I'd hear sighs, as if someone was standing right behind me, and there was one occasion where I heard a whisper, Come play. I prayed a lot, and that usually helped. I'd also ask them to quiet down, and that helped too. One time, my boyfriend and I were doing homework in the basement, and heard the garage door open, and the voices of my parents in the kitchen. We ran up to say hello, to discover an empty house. There was another time when my boyfriend stayed overnight. He slept in the living room, and in the morning he asked if we were playing a joke on him at night, as he kept hearing a ball bounce on the stairwell leading up to the bedrooms on the second floor, and in the kitchen. But every time he got up to see what was going on, no one was there. I don't think we even owned a ball, and certainly didn't play with one in the house. One time my mum heard a baby cry outside of our house at night. We lived in a safe and perfectly normal suburb, and there was no reason a baby would be in our backyard. One day, a lid flew off a cooking pot, and got halfway embedded into the kitchen ceiling. It wasn't a pressure cooker, just a regular lid and a pot. Another time we left for a family vacation, and my boyfriend was asked to take our paper in. He said he was in the house, and decided to make my bed, as we left at some ungodly hour like 5am, and I never got the chance to do it. He said at first he got a juice, and felt like someone was breathing down his neck. He kept turning around to find no one there, then he walked upstairs and while he was making my bed, he felt something grab his leg from underneath the bed. He got freaked and ran out, and refused to enter the house again, and just diligently hid the papers behind a flower pot outside until we returned. My sister one night awoke to a black caped figure standing silently in her room. She said there was also a bright orb near her window as her window faced the backyard and trees, and being on the second floor, there was no possible source of lights from cars. She covered her head with the blanket, and when she looked out, the figure and orb were still there. She went back under the blanket, and after some time they were finally gone. Our cat disappeared without a trace some day as well. We are unsure if it's related. My dad was one person who never experienced anything. No voices, no steps, no TVs and radios blasting out on their own. He is hard of hearing, so that could have been a factor. But one thing he can't explain is waking up at 4am, next to a lit tea light candle that he swears burnt out at midnight. The candle was right in front of his face, and he's extremely sensitive to light to the point where he covered any electronic lights with napkins as they disturb his sleep. It eventually got so bad, that I refused to sleep in my own bedroom, as I could feel someone moving around in the room at night, and I slept in my sister's room. My dad decided to call a medium, and the guy said that there were five spirits in the house, a boy, an old lady, a couple, and a very angry man. He gave us a giant candle with a cross, and said to burn it in the bedroom of the youngest child, which was now also my bedroom where I slept in a sofa chair. 
The candle was in a big glass jar and was hefty. All night it kept shaking and the glass kept making clicking noises against the counter it stood on. We were also to tell the spirits that this was our house now and they needed to go to the light. Things improved after the visit and shortly after I moved out to attend college where I slept with the lights on although I never experienced any paranormal activity in my apartment there. After college, I never stayed in the house for longer than a few days, always sleeping with the lights on, as the creepy feeling remained despite nothing noticeable happening anymore. Eventually, my parents sold the house. I live in a house in the middle of nowhere, deep in the woods. So it's always had that potential to be creepy, especially at night when all the deers, coyotes and other animals are making noises in the woods. The house was built about 13 years ago by my family. So we are the only ones to have lived in it. I don't know anything about the property other than it's in the country by some cornfields and a few other houses. Ever since I was a kid, there has been one room in the house that has always given me a weird feeling when I was in there by myself. And that is my mum and my stepdad's room. Anytime I was in there alone, I just felt odd, like I was on edge. However, this could just be because my mum never really liked me in her room. It is just a feeling of almost being watched or that I needed to hurry out of there. Like I said, it could be because of my mum's rule. So I'm automatically assuming this means my house is haunted. On Tuesday, I was home alone, no pets, nothing. And I was getting ready to go out. My mum has this hair product in her bathroom, which is attached to her bedroom that I love. So I stroll over down the hall in order to obtain some. As I was styling my hair, I hear a noise, like a smacking sound. I'm 100% certain of what I heard, as this sounded as if someone took their open bare hand and hit it off the wall three times. The sound seemed to have come from around where the door to her room is, or from the hallway where it opens up to a large entryway, because the smacks did not seem muffled. So it didn't sound like it was coming from another room, the attic, or any other part of the house. I immediately froze, because I thought I was busted by my mum or stepdad for stealing some product, and they were messing with me, or someone was knocking on the door to the house. I almost immediately left the bathroom and peered around her door down to the entryway to look at the door, which has a large glass panel. I saw no one standing there. I ran downstairs quickly to see if someone was pulling out of our driveway, like UPS or FedEx or perhaps even Jehovah's Witnesses, but there was no one leaving. We have a long driveway too, so it's not like someone could pull out quickly. Now at this point, I obviously start to freak out, and every horror movie I have seen and story I had read had come to mind. I grabbed my things to finish getting ready at my friend's house and left. I spent at least 15 minutes getting my things together. And in that time, nothing else happened. But as I said, as soon as I had my things, I ran to my car and left. On a lighter note, I was caught by our security camera running to my car in my PJ tops and shorts with Uggs on my feet and crying. After the fact, it was kind of funny, but I was definitely terrified. For a long time now, my mum and stepdad have not gotten along. For years, there was almost constant tension of arguments, and that is the room where they both had to sleep together. However, they have recently decided to separate, so the arguments have all but subsided. My question is, could the years of hate, tension, sadness and anger build up to create or invite something into the home. If this were the case, why was it showing itself now when things are finally coming to a resolution with both of them looking for new places to live? 
I of course called my stepdad in tears, suggesting a person could have even have broken in, as I was trying to rationalise it. He said he thought it could be a mouse in the attic. We live next to a field, remember? A loose side panel on the house from recent extreme winds, or ice from the ice machine in the kitchen. Now bear in mind I've heard all these noises before, I know what they sound like, and I don't think that they're the case. He checked the cameras, and I was the only person to enter and leave. Of course, everyone thinks I'm overreacting, but I am confident in what I heard, and the fact that it gave me chills. I live in quite a rural region of Germany. Many castles, fields, wineries, and bits of history splattered around my surroundings. Personally, I live in a house that was built around the 50s or 60s. It's fairly old, and is already getting cracks in the walls, with mould appearing in several spots with high humidity, which we are obviously trying to get rid of, but it's easier said than done as it reappears all the time, especially during winter. I don't know that much about my house's history, as it's just an old house like many others in this village. The only remarkable feature about my house being the fact that the former mayor of this village lived here. Now I won't start retelling stories from my childhood, as I was a generally anxious kid who'll get startled by the simplest of things being introverted and into art. I'd also have a huge imagination, so I might as well have made some things up. Anyway, it began with simple things that many other people experienced, such as seeing shadow people, dark, faint silhouettes right in the corner of my viewing area. They could be moving or standing there. Nothing to be scared of when you get used to it though, though I did feel uneasy while being home alone. There were other occasions where I would hear faint voices. They'd usually be calling out my name, which does get awkward when I start asking my family if they were calling me to find out that they were not. One of the more scary instances was when I heard, go away, late in the night, but perhaps I was just tired. But voices are voices and shadows are shadows. Time to get to the more interesting stuff. Certain lights can sometimes turn on without anyone being there and turn off after a while. Others begin to flicker and stop at some point. The latter especially happening very often recently. Certain objects can also sometimes fall down or be misplaced. Another incident involving a light did actually scare the living crap out of me as it occurred late at night while I was up. It was the mirror in front of my bed. Maybe it was the mirror in front of my bed, maybe the old screws. But as I'm looking at my own reflection, I heard a loud crash as the ceiling lamp came crashing down onto the ground, nearly giving me cardiac arrest. But the cherry on top is what happened here. We used to have this project at our school, where physics students could build a radio. My older brother being good in physics, decided to build such a radio as well, and it worked. However, it did end up in the back of our wardrobe, as back then we shared a room and stayed there for quite a while. It got quite dusty. So imagine a good and sunny day, my family being at home and I'm spending my time in my room playing games on my bed. I look in the already mentioned mirror and the radio starts shrieking with sound. I panic and run into the living room asking the rest of my family if they heard it. And hell, their confused and perplexed faces did. They asked me whether or not I made that noise, which I obviously didn't. And so I picked up the small radio and brought it into the living room. My brother tells me to open it as it's powered by batteries. There were no batteries though. It was in fact, not intact. My mum being a superstitious woman tells me to put it away in the attic, which I did. My younger sister is currently taking classes 
with the same teachers I used to have. And being a good brother, I did keep all the exams and tests I had, so she could use them to prepare herself for her impending examinations. And where did I keep them? The attic. The radio started screeching again, as my sister was looking for the papers. The same freaking radio. Other than that, it might be worth mentioning that I got cats two years ago, and they do sometimes stop mid-walk and stare into nothing, like walls or hallways. One of them does even start to growl, which is also unsettling. I grew up in a very rural area in the Appalachians. There was no town for half an hour or longer drive in any direction. No traffic lights, just back roads and terrifying houses, and a lot of forest. I grew up without limited electricity, water, and all of that jazz, as did most of the people around me. We had a set of well-off retirees move in pretty close to my house on the opposite side of the mountain. They built a fancy house on the other side of the mountain and had a good long winding one mile long driveway from the main mountain road. I knew the neighbors simply as Steve and Joanne. Steve and Joanne ended up getting custody of three of their grandchildren when I was about three years old, and they were very young and had developmental delays. One was deaf, one was a quadriplegic, and the youngest, Jonathan. I'm not exactly sure what was wrong with him, but he was slow. Wore a helmet and that kind of thing. But I was too little to know. Since we lived in an old, unsettled territory, where there is a ton of exposed wells from old foundations and cabins, my dad was always very cautious about where I played because of the danger of them. And despite Steve and Joanne's precautions, and no one apparently knows how, Jonathan got outside one day, wandered out into the woods, and fell in one of those wells. It happened to be one that had water in it, and he drowned. I was around five years old, and I remember hearing when the cops found his body, that he had drowned, and how inconceivable that was to me as a kid. I went to the funeral as well, and after this, the family built a large, gated deck around the house that was airtight to protect the kids just in case. It was a huge project, and an absolutely gigantic locked gate. My mum hung out with the family pretty often, so I was dragged over there for quite a few years until I was eight or so. She would do work for them, like clean their house or milk their goats, and I just wandered on the creepy deck on the side of the mountain and felt very unsettled. I got those feelings a lot as a kid, and to tell the truth, I had forgotten about the little boy who died. But anyway, I just remember being in the house and hating it there. Then one day, Steve and Joanne just up and left. They left everything and moved to Alaska. That was the rumor anyway but the house sat empty. I used to see the house through the woods when I was out exploring, and I remember it because none of my dogs would ever go towards the house at all. I could sometimes hear these loud scrapes and booms. Think of a sound that a tin sheet would make if you stomped on it, and it felt like the empty house was looking back at me. I attributed the sound to bears or deers or other loud animals and avoided it. One day I was about 10 years old, and saw an old truck peel into the driveway. I alerted my father, who grabbed his gun and jumped into his truck. He's a pretty aggressive, paranoid mountain man, and he followed the truck up, and when he returned I asked him who it was, and he refused to talk to me. But sneaky me pretended to play outside, but was actually outside the window listening as he told my mum what happened. The men in the other truck were two of Steve's sons. They had told my dad they were there to get one final look at the house that they helped build, because it was being sold, and they apparently asked my dad if he had ever gotten a weird feeling from the house. My dad said no, and as he explained it to my mum, 
He said while they were out there helping build that deck, that they heard the sound of kids running around the planks, and that one time he saw a shadow fall over his back, and the shadow was a young kid wearing a helmet. This absolutely petrified me, and I never told anyone what I heard. Fast forward a few years. When I was 12, I got really into horseback riding. However, after a few months of near misses from idiotic speeding drivers on the road, my dad had enough and banned me to mountain trail riding only. In his opinion, it was safer. I would have agreed at this point if he would have let me carry a knife or gun. The most convenient trail was the mile long dirt driveway to the abandoned house. Fair enough. I didn't have to ride the whole driveway and see the house. I could just go back and forth along the riding road and turn back before I reached the end of the driveway. So one day I was doing this and got braver and braver. Eventually I decided I would ride my horse up to the last turn, which was level with the house and where everyone parked their cars. I guess I was curious and just wanted to see this place up close now, as it had gotten dilapidated and the grand deck was looking pretty moldy. The driveway end was all overgrown, which my horse was really excited about. We were doing walks and trots for a good hour or two. His name was Tennessee. He was all sweaty and wet, and we walked up to the end of the driveway and immediately went for the tall grass, dipping his head down to about knee level to reach it nibbling away. I know I was going to be in trouble for letting him eat grass, but I had to mention before anything else that this horse was not skittish. He was middle aged and had been rodeo trick horse trained and was not afraid of wimpy horse scary things like loud noises or cars. He was intelligent and definitely the best trained animal I'd ever owned. He could even rear in a circle on his hind legs. It's one of those rodeo tricks. In any case, we were there for a good five minutes. The air was still, the day was hot, and the sun was shining. I was staring ahead. The house was to my right, and the horse and I were perpendicular to it. Down the mountain and just zoning out. I admit that I felt watched like I always did when I was near the house. But since I felt that way 99% of the time as a kid, it was easily ignored. But then I heard running footsteps in the empty house. I turned my head to look. And when I did, I got this insane feeling of dread. I half expected a bear to rush at me. The worst part is, just as this feeling hit me, my horse abruptly stopped his chewing and tensed up. I could feel it. His head shot to the right as well as his ears pointing forwards. That's when I internally went, oh shit. Because the confirmation from my horse was that this whole thing was real. We stared at the house in unison, footsteps getting stronger and the feeling of dread gradually getting worse. And then suddenly, a scraping noise like metal on metal. There was a huge swamp cooler in the large kitchen window, which got pulled inside as we stood there. I saw it wiggle and bang. It fell and all the doors and windows shook. Whatever had been walking inside lifted this immensely huge thing and pushed it inwards because it wouldn't push outwards. When the swamp cooler disappeared, my horse straight up bolted. He had never done that before or since, even after being near gunshots and wild boars, but he took off in a dead run and I just let him go. I was absolutely terrified and I remember hearing his hooves thundering along the dirt and gravel and hearing the wind and my own heartbeat and just this ungodly roaring, almost like a lion or a bear. Anyway, that's the story. Make of it what you will. I very slyly told my dad that I had seen the swamp cooler missing from the window, and he went over to check, and said the house had been ransacked, but nothing was stolen. He said it was human. There were no evidence of animals being inside, but the cabinets were opened, and the food and belongings were thrown around. 
He was angry, thinking it was a vandal. But he said all the doors were locked and the windows intact. Growing up, we moved every year. I can say that in my life I have lived in at least 20 homes. Only one of them I actually experienced anything in. This would have been in fifth grade, so I was probably around 10. And I had two younger brothers who were around four and six, and my parents. The house was just a simple one story in a normal neighborhood built in the 70s. This was 1999. So none of the houses were terribly old, some even renovated. It was a hit and miss middle class family neighborhood. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary at first. My parents both worked during the day. So since my brothers didn't yet go to school full time, my grandma who also lived in the neighborhood would take care of them during the day. And I went home after school. As I was the last one to leave in the morning, I knew to turn everything off and lock up before I went to school. One day, I came home to find the shower was running. I thought it was weird, but didn't dwell on it much further as I wanted to drop my stuff off and get back outside. Then it happened again for the next few days. I went around and checked all of the doors and windows, but everything was locked. I told my mum about it, but she kind of brushed it off. I would find out later that she brushed it off because she didn't want anything involved in the paranormal about the house. A little bit later, I was laying in bed, starting to fall asleep when I felt something crawling on me. It felt like a light footed cat over my sheets. I was too afraid to look. So I just lay there while this thing crawled across my bed on and off of me. I never did look at it. This being an older house, the registers were on the floor and I didn't sleep with a window open or a fan on. So it wasn't wind blowing my blanket around. One thing I've never been able to figure out is how my little brother's Mickey Mouse toy would work with no batteries. I mean, it's not like we took them out and it would work for an hour. This thing had no batteries for months and continued to function fully. This same little brother was also caught by my mum multiple times talking to himself in his room. When my mum would ask him who he was talking to, he would simply reply with the old man. Whatever, kids have imaginary friends. But one night I heard hissing. I got up and looked out my door to see my little brother hissing like a cat at the top of the fridge. I went and got my mum, who rushed out of bed and kept telling him to stop. She started crying and my dad rushed into the kitchen and finally started shaking him. He would not break his eyes from the top of the fridge. Finally, my dad literally shook him out of it. And he looked at my dad with the biggest smile and said something along the lines of he's gone now and started laughing. We only lived in that house for a few more months after that. But the one other incident I will bring up is when my family went out to dinner and run errands one night. I was eating at a friend's house and didn't want to go. So I went home after dinner around eight as they still weren't home. It was dark out by now. So I went inside and turned on the TV. I was sitting there for a while when I thought I heard whispering. I couldn't make out what it was but didn't care. I just wanted to ignore it so it would go away. It came to a point in lull in between the TV where the show ends and before the commercial begins. And I heard it clearly. Hey, it was so close to my right ear that it could have been a person. I felt the breath on the side of my face. I booked it out the door and sat outside until my parents got home. Not wanting to scare anyone. I told them I was outside watching the fireflies. And I got yelled at for leaving the TV and lights on while being outside. Again, 20 plus homes and only one with paranormal activity. There were always little things that would happen. Lights would turn on and off, some light voices and shadows coming from the corner of your eye. It certainly creeped me out. 
and I'm glad that we no longer reside there. Back around 2011, I had a girlfriend, who is now my ex, who really wanted to experience something paranormal. Myself and my family had experiences, as did hers. So now she was stoked about seeing something too. She decided that she wanted to do a really stereotypical thing. Let's go to a graveyard in the early hours of the morning and see if we can catch something on film or audio in a picture. I was against this, because at the time we were living with my father, who was in ill health. I'd always heard it was possible for things to follow you home, so I didn't want to do anything that could make his health worse. However, she was the kind of person that couldn't be talked out of something after making up her mind. Knowing how dangerous an area like this can be in the early hours, I ultimately went with her, as there are a lot of drunks leaving pubs and walking through this area. We spent the better part of three and a half hours wandering around the graveyard before we found absolutely nothing. So we decided to go back home and spent a few hours watching TV before falling asleep. As we went to bed extremely late into the morning, we didn't wake up until around 11.30. We sat and spoke about the night before, how it was a shame that nothing happened, and then moved on to talk about our family's experiences. During this time, I started getting dressed. I put on my clothes and was sat on the bottom corner of my bed putting my shoes on when as we were talking, we heard a familiar crack as the door opened. My girlfriend's face lit up with a shocked expression as she was not dressed. In one single impressive movement, she jumped up and pulled the duvet from underneath her and covered herself with it. I looked over towards the door, puzzled, as we were the only people in the house that could get upstairs as my dad had extremely bad legs covered in large deep wounds that would not heal. The handle came down and stayed down as the door slowly opened. After about four seconds, the door had opened about three quarters before the handle slowly came back up halfway before snapping back as if someone had let go of it. Slowly it opened all the way and I could see there was nobody on the other side. At this point, I had a huge grin on my face, partially from shock, as I realized something else wasn't right. There was no noise leading up to this. The house is old, the floorboards and staircase are both completely shot. And if someone was heading towards the room, we would hear them without a doubt. Looking at me, she asked, who's there? All I could say was, no one. Eventually, I did leave the room to check the house. It was just the three of us. No one else was there, and my dad, of course, hadn't moved from downstairs. Around half an hour of this went by, and I went to our local shop to pick up a few bits. I brought two Rustler burgers as a quick breakfast for us before we went out. My ex stood talking to me in the kitchen as she watched me place the burgers in the microwave, with each on a separate small plate side by side, taking up almost all the room on the base of the microwave. After a minute or so, I looked through the door and saw something I wasn't expecting. The plates that I put in side by side were now stacked on top of each other, right in the middle. I didn't say a word. Blank faced, I pulled out both plates, as they were, and looked at my girlfriend. Her jaw dropped. I know you didn't put them in like that, I saw you, she said. After this, doors would begin to open without anyone being on the other side. This became a common occurrence for six months, and pretty much became a normal part of everyday life. 
I remember it happening when my friend was there. We sat playing FIFA on the Xbox, when suddenly we heard a crack. My friend looked around and said, Your door just opened. To which I replied, Yeah, it does that. After my parents divorced back in 2006, my mum could no longer afford to pay the mortgage on the house which we were living in, so we were forced to move. I was an angry child at the time, angry that we had to move out of this house. I loved that house. My mum and sister fell in love with the house that was across the street from a cemetery. I was terrified of cemeteries at the time, so living across from one was something out of my worst nightmares. We did, however, end up moving in. My mum, my sister, our two dogs and our one cat. Things were quiet for several weeks while living there, and it wasn't until six months later that unexplainable happenings began to occur. Six months in, I woke up to a loud crash and looked over to the side of my bed. My Labrador was lying on the floor having a massive seizure. He never had had a seizure before, so this was terrifying. He had at least three in a row, and that day he was diagnosed with epilepsy. We'd had him for five years, and he had never once had a seizure before, so it was odd that he'd have one now. My sister adopted two kittens, and we had a cat tree that they would sleep on. It sat next to the recliner where I'd sit most of the time, so I could use it as my laptop. One day, I was sitting there in the recliner, and her cat, Tigger, was fast asleep on his tree. The house was completely silent, and then suddenly, Tigger shot off the tree like someone had come up from behind him, and screamed as loudly as they could. It kind of reminded me of a scene from Ghost, when Patrick Swayze's character screamed into his cat's face to attack his murderer that was in his house. That cat was freaked out for the rest of the day, and stayed up in my sister's room for the remainder of that day. The family cat, Addix, who never had had a sick day in her life, suddenly had two massive strokes the same night, within 30 minutes of each other, and died in my mum's arms a year after moving in. It wasn't just the animals that were affected though. Whatever lived there came after me. At 3.03am, every night, my dog and I would be in a deep sleep, and at the bottom of the steps, it would sound like my mum stood at the bottom shouting, Nick! And it would wake both of us up. The first couple of times I would go see if my mum would be okay, and she'd be fast asleep. After that, I got into the habit of sleeping with my headphones on, so I didn't have to hear it. But even then, I'd still sometimes wake up to my name being shouted. Things would go missing in my house, not just anyone's things, but mine. I remember clearly that one night I had put my iPod on its charger before I went to bed. When I woke up the next day, my iPod was gone. It was nowhere to be found, and I searched everywhere for it. I gave up trying to find it after about a week, because there was nowhere else to look. Then about a month after it disappeared, I woke up, and the iPod was back on its charger like nothing had happened. I was working a job where I was closing the store almost nightly, so by the time I got home, I would be the only one awake, so I would sit in my living room with my laptop writing, when I would hear a whisper coming from the vents from the basement. It was a full of conversation, and one time the whispers got louder, and so I took off upstairs with my dog. This was constant, until I moved out at 24, and I took my dog with me. The minute we moved out, his seizures stopped. He was a completely different dog. My stuff stopped going missing, and the whispers also stopped. It's been nearly six years since I've lived in that house. 
I was the only one who believed the house was haunted. And I do bring it up with other people. My mum, my sister, but they still insist that there's nothing wrong. Whatever was living there, I was a target, and so were the animals, and I never want to go back, and I'll never have to, because the house has been sold. I do wonder though, if the current owners experience anything like I did. Christmas Day, mid 90s. I was about six years old. The house we lived in had a conservatory, which we used for family dinners. That Christmas, there was my parents and grandmother present. I was pretty young, so basically remember nothing else from that day, apart from the event that followed up, both of which are crystal clear in my memory. Dinner's ready, the TV gets turned off, and we all head to the dining table to start eating. Then we hear a deep gargling sound coming from the adjoining lounge. It sounds like a mix of choking, gargling water in the throat, and the way a singer sounds when a song is reversed. It was pretty disturbing. Everything goes silent. We all freeze and glance at each other, then start to try and locate the source of such a noise. We look around basically as the whole house is eliminating everything we could possibly think of as a potential source. As far as I remember, we eventually shrugged off the event and carried on with the day as normal. Now, the follow up was sometime later. It was probably springtime. My dad likes his gardening, and about three quarters of the garden were pristine. The very bottom, however, was my patch and I could do whatever I wanted down there. I dug a hole, a big hole, that was perhaps two feet deep. I say a 12 foot wide hole when I found a set of top front teeth, which appeared to be set into pinkish stone. They were definitely for a human, and we didn't really investigate this much, as it was more curious. This wasn't the only incident at that house that was odd. Many years later, we found out that about 60 years prior, there was a stream at the bottom of the garden. While I've always had a keen sense of skepticism, my mother was convinced that the house was haunted, and later that the spirits had followed us to our new house. We had a few instances of banging and scratching from the attic, although in hindsight, I'm pretty sure that was something to do with the heating system. The oddest experience was not necessarily that scary, but I was running up a really high fever one night. I was in bed and hallucinating all kinds of stuff, massive spiders crawling up into bed with me and things like that. My room was painted, but had a wallpaper border near the ceiling. And one of my hallucinations was of my uncle, an avid biker riding along it. I started shouting his name at the top of my voice and getting really upset and he died in a motorbike accident about a month later. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. As I said at the start, I hope you've had a fantastic Friendsgiving, if you celebrate it. I'm not sure how the Friendsgiving today will go. I'll let you know in tomorrow's secret message section. I'm sure it'll be great. I love food. Who doesn't love food? I really hope they have that sweet potato with marshmallows dish. That is so delicious. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. Yesterday's poll was insanely close. I, I wasn't even sure which video to record up till the end. So I gambled and went with deep woods. And when I finished the recording, believe it or not, Haunted Houses was winning and I thought, uh oh. I'm gonna have to re-record. <laughs> but then when I finished the edits and everything, Haunted Houses was losing by like 1%. So I was, I was sort of relieved. <laughs> I was gonna record the other one anyway. I'd actually already half recorded this video yesterday. But uh, yeah, then Pandora woke up. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed tonight's video. If you did, please be sure to let me know. And to 
the honourable third place of the poll glitch in the matrix, you'll be seeing that tomorrow for Black Friday. So if you're interested in that, please come back and check it out. It's going to be a really fun video. I do like glitch in the matrix stories. If there's a story that you would like to share, feel free to send it to my email or post it to my Reddit. Please just be generous with your description, paragraphing and punctuation. And as always, a huge thank you to my amazing patrons who can be seen on screen. If you're interested in getting some Patreon rewards and having your name in the description, not in the description, and the end of every video, feel free to check it out. And for as little as $1 a month, you can really be helping Mortis Media and the running of the channel and everything. Well, thanks guys. In any case, it's now time to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.